competitor with the brand new 60 volt program we have moved up to a 1500 watt motor which equates if you do a uh, conversion on that that's a full two horsepower per tool that our closest com thank you jeff our closest competitor is a 0.6 horsepower so we're throwing uh, three times the horsepower at you through the new system if you notice there's been some cosmetic changes to the tools we've brought in some uh, new black uh, hard code anodizing into the motor housing. The new rotating handle that we had before is now uh, also hard coded. Virtually everything from the uh, motor mount assembly itself to the front working end, the blades or the tips, is exactly the same. What we have done is basically converted the entire drive mechanism to this new 60 volt flex platform. If you by chance happen to have a 36 volt uh, ion tool that you purchased last year, we're offering a conversion kit. And that basically replaces the motor, the gearbox, the drive mechanism, the batteries, the battery mount receiver, the switch plate. So basically what you're getting is you're getting a whole one third butt end of that tool for a very, very minimal cost to upgrade you into the modern program. What that allowed us to do was bring a lot more horsepower to our performance. So if you notice, uh, everything we do in the hydraulic rescue tool market, whether it's twin line or battery operated, it's horsepower driven. So when we look at things getting smaller and smaller and smaller, what is happening there is you're taking horsepower and scale and size proportion away. And at some point you have to compromise performance. One of the things we did uniquely different with these since day one is we are using a single stage hydraulic pump inside these tools. For those of you who are familiar, what happens in a dual stage pump is you start at a certain flow rate, you achieve a certain working pressure, and then the flow rate drops off. So what you might have is you, in a two-stage tool, you might have a very, very rapid cycling time from point A to point B, but as soon as you meet resistance against something such as spreading or cutting, your point B to point C time elongates dramatically. So we, some tools, as you go out and you go out on the show floor today, when you see them cycling, they're going to be in a no load situation, so they're going to seem very, very fast. That's fine, but what happens when you start dealing with patients in real life world such as desperation? One of the things that you don't want to do is wait 20 to 30 seconds to make a cut. If you've been acclimated and used to a certain amount of performance, you don't want to compromise the performance by going to battery. That was one of the things that was hard with us to for those of you that have been using Ampus or familiar with Ampus, we've always been a performance-based driven company. We've maintained that. So with the single stage pump, what you'll see is we may get A to B a little bit slower than some of our peers, but we're getting from A to C significantly faster. In some cases, 20 to 30 seconds faster. So what you'll see when Jeff and Bill are doing their evolutions, you'll notice the blade movement will remain consistent throughout the entire cut or the entire spread. Okay, so uh, in the ION product line, we have a 24 inch spreader, we have a 28 inch spreader, we have a 16 inch combination tool. Uh, Jeff has the five, six and a half inch opening cutter. Uh, and Jeff's just gonna show you some neat evolutions and applications with that making blind cuts, having the ability of taking that cutter and pulling the material that we're trying to cut, keeping it back into the fulcrum, but also it's gonna give him the ability to go into some very, very tight areas that um, with the narrow profile and the short length of the tool from the back to the front, it's gonna allow him to make A post or B post or C post cuts and not have his, uh, the rear end of his tool come in contact with other parts of the vehicle. By doing what we did with the battery and narrowing their tool, we were able to do a top mount side discharge battery change, Jeff? Let me show that battery. <laughs> so with a simple click of a button, battery slides off the side. We grab a new battery, we slide it right back in. With a rear mount battery, if we were making a cut in a horizontal fashion and the rear end came in contact or the tool died, your battery basically is unremovable from that tool. So the top mount side discharge narrowed the profile, shortened the profile of the tool, and gave us better access to the battery. As typical Amcus tools, the control valve is top mounted. It has a dead man control valve switch on it. It has a nub guard on it, so in the event the tool is turned upside down, it won't activate the control valve. 
but again very unique to Amcus is the rotating handle. This allows us to position the blades in direct relation to what we're trying to accomplish, such as if we're cutting hinges, Jeff can turn the tool so the blades are in line with the hinge and his transport hand remains in the exact same ergonomic position. If he needs to make a high cut on a vehicle, high on a B post, he can flip it around, tuck the control valve up under his armpit, still support it in the same position and not become uncomfortable. If he were to make a conventional cut by leaving the D handle in its spot, he's raising both hands up to his chin or up to his forehead, which is very uncomfortable. It's easier to support something from the bottom than it is from the top. So it's very, very ergonomically friendly. It has a tension lever. Some people like to move it, some people don't. The red tab on the side allows him to compress the collar on the cylinder and virtually makes the handle immovable if you do not want to move it. Integrated into the front of it, we have a high intensity LED lighting. There's one on each side, two independent batteries. Those, ba those lights are not activated by the battery itself. They're independent batteries built right into the handle three different intensities and they have an automatic timeout feature after 20 minutes. Okay, To power up the ION tool, we have a top mounted uh, button. For the shows right now, we have them programmed uh, with a longer startup time, but basically he'll depress the button, he'll, his green LED light will blink when it's solid green, he's fully activated. To turn it off, you would do the same basic thing or you could actually dislodge the battery. Okay. On the ion spreader, Bill Davis will come up and show us. Basically, the ion spreader, 28 inch spreader. Again, very, very commonality to our, our standard spreaders, the 24 and the CRT and the twin line. We have the quick release uh, removable tips. There's a spring loaded button at the end of each arm to press both sides. The tips slide off. There's an easy on, easy off feature. It's auto ramped and there's a big thumb hole socket there to take them back off. Originally these didn't have the big keyhole when you had big fire gloves or big extrication gloves on. Made it difficult to depress both buttons at the same time so they made the thumb hole socket bigger. So now even with a glove hand you can easily remove the tips. If you notice there's a strange looking tip on there which is called an extended reach tips. They can be used individually or as in sets like Bill just had it. You can use a a gator tip, you can use an extended reach tip, but what's unique is we can also reverse the extended reach tips. They will snap onto the arm. So now in certain situations I have a flat line base bottom tip which will put me in contact with the ground and I have a curved lifting tip that allows that tip to conform whatever it is that I'm trying to lift. So in some cases if you have to do a very very rapid lift on a vehicle to get just maybe a finger out or a leg or an arm, you can do a very, very quick lift with these and it's very, very stable. What's unique too is these are the same exact accessories that you use on all your other tools. So there's a lot of different dimensions to these. In a pair, they're actually adding eight inches of spread to your tool. So with a 28 inch spreader with a set of those, we're going out to 36. With the 24, we're obviously going out to 32. And if you have a 30 CRT and you're arsenal at your firehouse and takes you out to a 40. You know, one of the things that's critical that we need to understand is these cars right here right now, they're not damaged. Everybody agree with that? Uh, so therefore, we actually had to do certain things to these in advance. But my point to that was when you're working in a junkyard or a demo like this, everything is where it should be. Okay. When we get out in the real world and we're dealing with head on collapses or collisions or a car around the pole, Everything is broken. Things have gotten a lot smaller. Your working spaces have gotten tighter. So again, with the design of the equipment, making it small, compact, it allows us to get interior, allows us to fit you know, in between tight spaces without worrying about ourselves, our integrity, or uh, the integrity of the tool. So these are all some of the foundations of why the IONS, really what we feel excel in the industry and uh, these cats are going to show you how well they do their particular job. We're very, very proud of these. Um, what's our booth number, Kyle? 35. By the way, everybody, Kyle Smith, the other cat in the gray shirt, that's our president of the uh, Amcus product line group. 3503. 3503, thank you. That is our booth number after this. If you'd like to come see us, we have another one of these at 330. 
uh, please come on and see us and let us talk to you one on one of these. Let us offer you a demo. We're very, very proud of these. We feel they've come a long way in an extremely short period of time. Um, and there's a lot of other accessories we could talk about, but these two have been chomping at the bit to get this done. So, with that said, Jeff and Bill has a question. Oh. Sorry, what's this black part made of? Oh. Boy, it's funny you should ask that. Basically, these tools are solid metal. There are no plastic components on this tool, all right? The black part that Bill was talking about with his hand on it is a fully anodized aluminum motor cover. And inside that motor cover is a beautiful 1500 watt electric battery driven motor and a planetary gearbox, which is also made by DeWalt. We did not just take a DeWalt battery and bolt it onto our stuff. This is all designed and engineered as to be an operated match set. The other thing you'll notice with the ION logo on the side, that is the reservoir. We do not use an expandable rubber bladder, which is subject to ripping, tearing, and being punctured. That is an actual metal reservoir with a metal lid on it with a diaphragm inside. So there's virtually no way to uh, expose your hydraulics to atmosphere. The other unique thing is, we act, and it's harder to see, we actually have a test port on this tool. So, let her eat, Bill. <laughs> Basically, what the guys are utilizing with the battery tools is what we call tandem operation. And we're really seeing this work in the battery tool market. Just using the tools together, Bill took the time to take the spreader, create enough room for Jeff to just reach in there, draw that cutter into that assembly and make the cut. Bill can then go in and finish and start to gain room and access to the bottom hinge. And then Jeff will come right back in with the cutter and cut the bottom hinge or at the same time gain enough access to cut the lasting that can be. Bill to do is go back around Jeff, begin to work on opening the back door up. So you can see that in two basic spreads and three basic, two basic cuts, you have that front door off. The value to that is we have virtually no collateral damage to the rest of the vehicle, such as tearing your A post, tearing your B post. It's one of the things, again, remember in extrications, we have what in the car? People. We have people, okay? We can't put the spreader on the front seat to break the hinges. We can't put the tool inside the car if we have victims in the way. So this allows us to work in tandem, make room for each other, and then back out and move into your next evolution. What Jeff and Bill are doing on this side, uh, just so you know, uh, for safety reasons, we had to prep these cars, we checked for the airbags, they've been de-energized, we looked for our hazards, we did all our peak and peel evolutions to make sure we were safe. What they're doing is a two-door operation on the, on the driver's side. When they come back around to the passenger side, they're going to do uh, the two-door swing evolution.